Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We we'll cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we we'll give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, finally, we got a fun episode for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want today's full show before it comes out on YouTube, it is streaming for free on Apple Podcasts and Spotify on our Dreamers Pro Podcast. We have that pinned in the comments section below. Anyway, let me get into this uh, into this topic here. As you guys know. I've been having a very rough two weeks or so um, ever since the James Harden trade went down. Initially, when that trade went down, uh, I had a lot of questions about it, and I was quickly to I was I was quickly able to come to the realization that there was no way that all four of these guys were going to be able to work in that starting lineup, especially uh, Russell Westbrook and James Harden, given the fact that they have, to some extent, redundant skill sets. Basically, meaning. <clears throat> Both of these players needed the ball in their hand. Now, you know what's interesting? You know what? You know what is interesting? I realize this is the follower. Uh, it's not the follower nation. Uh, um, what is it? Follower era. But, you know, people always been following other people for a long time. But what I've noticed is that there are people that just cannot help but twerk it up for celebrities. They just can't help it. I said about two or three games into this experiment that either Russell Westbrook or James Harden needed to come off the bench. Predominantly, I was saying James Harden. Then all of a sudden when Zach Lowe says it and this person says it and that person said it says it all of a sudden now it becomes this big idea and they're like no you never said that you never I'm like what what is what is with y'all this 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 incessant need to constantly twerk it up all over the place for celebrity especially dudes I don't understand it but anyway I was one of the people that came out there and said that I believe that uh, one of these guys needs to go to the bench, and I was actually advocating for James Harden to go to the bench, given the fact that Russell Westbrook can push the pace, he can attack the defense, he can play defense, he can offensive rebound. So I said that that needed to be a decision that needed to be ma uh, to be made. So what happened yesterday, after we had uh, finished shooting our shows, uh, Mitch, who works with us, he sent me a, 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 what is it, a piece of news on our WhatsApp group, and he goes, and the news essentially goes, R Russell Westbrook has decided to opt to go to the bench. And I was like, wait, what? And we went out there, we did a live, and I was absolutely ecstatic to hear that news. Absolutely ecstatic because I said, now the Clippers actually have a chance at winning something uh, this season, given the fact that now they've decided to make uh, this adjustment. And then this morning I came across the clip, before I even get to the game last night, of Ty Lue reacting to Russell Westbrook making that decision. So for those of you who didn't hear that, we want to play that. But before we even get into that, this video is brought to you by sponsor Factor Meals. If you're like me or anybody that works at Dreamers Pro, chances are you're a very, very busy person, especially during the lunchtime when you don't have time to go to the grocery store, pick out fresh ingredients, and come back home and cook healthy, delicious meals. Sometimes we're so busy that you just end up finding yourself making a ham sandwich or something like that, which isn't really ideal. And this is the reason why we are excited to be partnering with Factor Meals. Factor Meals is America's number one ready to eat meal kit. You can choose from up to 35 gourmet meals. Every meal is packed with premium ingredients crafted by Factor Meals team of culinary experts and designed by dietitians to ensure that every meal is packed with premium science-backed nutritional quality. Your meals are delivered directly to your door and all you need to do is heat them up in just under two minutes, then they are ready for you to eat and enjoy. So for example, this week, I think I'm gonna go with the Italian herb chicken. What I love is that under every single meal, you can see if it's a calorie conscious option. For example, this meal I just chose is a dietitian approved calorie smart meal which is around 550 calories or less per serving and also a protein plus meal with 30 grams of protein or more per serving so if you want to give it a try click the link in the description below or head over to factormeals.com slash dreamers 50 and use code dreamers 50 to get 50 percent off and remember when you try factor meals by using the link in the description below remember that you're supporting this channel thank you so what we want to do is want to quickly play is about a 20 second soundbite of head coach Ty Lue reacting to Russell Westbrook making the suggestion to come off the bench. Take a listen to what Ty Lue had to say here. Ty, okay, um, were you anticipating Russ reaching out to you or was that a complete surprise and what was your reaction when you did? It was a complete surprise, um, but it doesn't surprise me because, you know, he's a winner and he wants to win, you know, and so, um, but I wasn't, I wasn't looking forward to it, you know, and so it just kind of happened and, you know, we'll see what it looks like tonight. Thank you. So you heard what Ty Lue had to say. Now, I'm going to confess I did not watch the game. The reason I didn't watch the game, I'm going to reiterate it for you guys here today. Again, I'm in the UK right now. That's the hence the reason you see this change up of a background. I will be back to our normal studio in a few months. But 
Uh, it was pretty late. That game was coming on at 3.30 in the morning, and there was no way in hell I was going to go to stay up to watch that game at 3.30 in the morning, knowing that, knowing that I had to do some work today. But I did see the highlights. I saw the highlights, and the Clippers ended up winning a very, very close game. And in that fourth quarter, it was kind of like this tug of war, this back and forth, where these guys had to execute down the stretch. And ultimately, James Harden ended up hitting the three-point, four-point play that ultimately ended up sealing the victory. Uh, for the Clippers in that game. Now, if I quickly look at the box score, uh, here's what I noticed immediately. Kawhi Leonard scored 26 points in that game to lead the, to lead the team. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's Kawhi Leonard Wash. I'm like, these people, these, these are people that accuse me of not knowing basketball. They're talking about it's Kawhi Leonard Wash when clearly their offense had been totally destroyed. But Kawhi Leonard went back to his usual efficient self. Yesterday, he shot 50% from the field, 50% from the three, 87.5% from the free throw line. He scored 26 points, got you seven, re uh, excuse me, eight rebounds, two assists, five steals. Kawhi Leonard can't play defense. He got five steals and one block with only three turnovers. Paul George also also played well, although he wasn't as efficient. Uh, Paul George shot 36% from the field, 40% from the three. He took a high volume, attempting 10. He made four. That's still a very high volume. Nevertheless, he hit 40% of them. In this NBA, that's a good percentage. He made 100% of his free throws. He did get you eight rebounds. So those two guys were able to contribute 16 rebounds. That's very good. Three assists. He only had three turnovers and two steals. Then you look at Terrence Mann, who was the guy that they opted to put into the lineup. For those of you who may not be aware, the reason Ty Lue elected to insert Terrence Mann into the lineup is for the simple reason. He said, number one, he likes the versatility that Terrence Mann provides his team. Number two, he said that he didn't want to wear down his best perimeter defenders in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George at the beginning of the game. So he said he will start Terrence Mann, given the fact that Terrence Mann can space the floor, and you can put him on those quicker, faster point guards and other guys like that. That is the primary reason they elected to start uh, Terrence Mann. And obviously, he earned that starting position. He didn't really score well. He only had one point, but nevertheless, they were able to get a victory, and that's all I care about. Now, if we look at James Harden, who also got the start, he shot 72% from the field, which is excellent, 50% from the three, 85.7% from the free throw line. He got you nine rebounds, which is more than Kawhi Leonard and Paul George on an individual level. He got you seven assists. Now, get this. Here's the good part. He only had three turnovers. Only three turnovers. That's exceptional. You dish out nine assists, three turnovers. That's a pr pretty good turnover ratio to assists. Then you look at Russell Westbrook, who came off the bench. He had eight points. He shot 22%, 33% from the three-point line. But guess what? The most important stat of this game is that they won. And I can almost guarantee you if Russell Westbrook had 30 points, had he started the game and the Clippers lost, no one would care. To me, the only thing that matters is that the Clippers won, period. And that's it. They were able to execute down the, down the stretch. The Houston Rockets are not as bad as people thought they were. They had lost, I think, their first three games of the season, and they went on to win six games in a row. No one is making enough noise about the job, the excellent job that Ime Odoka is doing with the Houston Rockets. We need to pay more attention to Ime Odoka and give him his flowers because he's doing a fantastic job now that he's been given a second chance to coach uh, an NBA team. On the Clippers' side, listen, I think this is the step in the right direction. Obviously, they're going to have um, a lot of things to iron out. But this starting lineup, based on the highlights that I saw, again, I did not see the game for obvious reasons. Um, the offense looked to run a little bit better. It looked to run a little bit better. Their best players were in a groove, although Paul, jo Paul George didn't shoot as well. But their best player, Kawhi Leonard, was back to his old efficient self. And I think that's the way the offense should run. Now, the thing that James Harden gives you in the starting lineup is that he gives you legitimate spacing. And he is a legitimate scorer. And that's something maybe Russell Westbrook wasn't. Russell Westbrook could be hit or miss. Now, he wouldn't hurt the team with his three-point shooting again because he didn't attempt a lot of threes. But James Harden is the better three-point shooter. So they got better from a shooting standpoint. Playmaking stayed the same. I came across an article this morning that I didn't want to pay too much attention to. It was from The Athletic where they said essentially the reason that the Clippers went out there to make this trade was ultimately to remove Russell Westbrook out of the starting lineup. That's what that article was alluding to. I don't know this for a fact. The reason I'm saying that is because Russell Westbrook was the one that elected to come off the bench. Now, unless these people that wrote that article are fortune tellers, or maybe they had direct contact with Russell Westbrook, um, it doesn't make any sense because Russell Westbrook was the one that proposed the idea to come off the bench. To me, listen, um, I think it was a very good win. I think this is something to build on. Uh, there's still a lot of work, but I 100% like the team way more 
than I did before when they had all four of these guys in the starting lineup. Now I can feel comfortable about this team, not knowing that now they have to go through the same growing process of every other team trying to come together and build continuity throughout the course of a regular season. So to me, I was absolutely excited, and uh, hopefully the Clippers are able to keep it up. And it seems like the organization finally did the right thing, whether if it was someone that whispered it in Russell Westbrook's ear or he did it all on his own volition. Anyway, uh, I think it was the best move. So to me, I'm happy. Uh, good night for the Clippers, and hopefully they can keep it up. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Again, if you enjoy the video, be sure to make sure you leave a comment below and make sure you like the video. And we catch you guys on the next show.